Hey Tyler, ready for a Roland Martin YouTube adventure? <laughs> we ready. Son, we're gonna get out there and we're gonna do a little worm fishing, I think. There's some really good spots here. I want to show show the audience a few things about worm fishing. John, look at this. We're gonna take this old Cinco like this, and we're gonna catch some fish, son. Big old bass, some of them six and eight pounds, maybe. Five inch Cinco, 50 pound test braid, South Florida, it's the summertime. Hey, I tell you what, folks. You know, I'm an old part, but I know a thing or two. I'm telling you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you guys as best I can just the ABCs of worm fishing. That's something that you just can't do without. Worm fishing is the most important type of fishing in the whole world. And when you couple it up with the possibility of an eight pound bass, you got a deal. Let's go fishing. What if I start right here? Probably. I'm gonna start right, I'm not gonna go too far. Just gonna go a little ways. Take my old worm. Take my troll motor. You know, it's really good to have a supply and troll motor like this. Okay. Worm fishing. Let's try that pass right to the point. Boom. Perfect spot. You know, that's a perfect ambush point for that. You can take a right there just a little bit out to the left. Around the wood. Okay. Move that thing along. Speaking of gators, he's going down right now. Gators just went under. This place here, Pony, has, has gator permits. We get like 50 gator permits. We can, we can hunt gators. That's another kind of whole thing. That's going to be another thing on the Roller Mark YouTube Adventures is some alligator hunt. We do it a couple different ways. Okay, right? Just go to the pocket. Let the worm sink. Now, notice my rod. The, only first, the first thing about that worm fishing is got to hold the rod right. I'm kind of holding it at 45 because I can feel, if you notice the lines coming at 90 degrees from the tip of that rod down, so I want to keep that 90 degree angle, you can feel better. Just feel it, just kind of just barely twitching along. And I'm fishing close to the reed, so if they don't hit it as in three or four feet, I'm going to really do the quick. Okay, go to the next little spot. That little pocket right there, right in there. Hold the rod up. Be a line watcher. If you see a fish move, or you see your line twitch, or you're ready to set the hook. Yep. In the water is what you see. You hear that pump? That pump means that there's water moving around. Anytime there's water moving around these lakes, it's good fishing. That's what we're going to do here. We're going to use up here just a little bit farther. I know the pump's making a big noise and it's going to distracting. I'm going to get up just a little bit farther here. And, uh, the water is actually not coming in right here. The water is coming in over there. Okay, let's get up to these trees. Uh, power pole down. And it's the deepest part of this reservoir. For whatever reason, they left not only these trees, but there's for 50 feet or 100 feet all around that area out there, there's a whole bunch more trees and a whole bunch more bass. So what I'm going to do is ease up here, get the sun right, put the power pole down and sun, and we'll go to work catching some bass fish. Okay, let's put the power poles down. And see what happens. Power poles down. There we go. Power pose down. First cast. Nice little cast right by that tree. Let the line just sit there. Watch the line. Be a line watcher. Be a line watcher. Be a line watcher. Be a line watcher. Okay, just move it just a little bit. That's the first time that you move the worm. You don't want to jump it very much. You want to kind of drag it. Okay, now watch this folks. I'm telling you, there's some fish in here. Let's go bite. Come on, man. There's one. He's running with it. Oh, I missed him. Not a good sign. <laughs> he hit it. Okay, let me show you what I'm doing here. I'll catch that fish. 
I start off with a, with a really nice little worm hook. This is a 4 aught EWG worm hook, and that's a little 8th ounce weight. It's a screw in weight, and that's a standard 5 inch Cinco. It's kind of a torn up thing. I need to put a new one on. But anyway, for right now, it's on backwards and everything else. I'll screw that little weight in, screw it in a little bit, hook the worm. Okay, that's good enough. Let's try that again. There's a strike. He's got it. He's got it. Okay, now nah, there we go. Now we're talking. There we go. Nice pass. Nice pass. <laughs> nice pass. Yes, sir. Yeah, he hit it hard. And now another thing about worm fish I want to explain to you real quick. What happened, he hit it real fast. He hit it real fast. I'll tell you what is happening when they run with it fast like that. There's more than one fish there because they're in competition with one another. And so what they're trying to do, they're trying to run away from, from each other. And when he hit it, he just took off with it like crazy. Okay, let's get this thing unreleased and be caught again another day. Oh, might have to get some pliers on him. That's the thing about these favorite rods, they really set a hook. Okay, let's put him back. Go down, down. Okay, that's it, that's it, that's it. He's going crazy, he's going crazy. Oh yeah, yeah, oh he got off. Right at the boat. There's a bush to the right. I should have shown you that. I, he was running at me so fast, I couldn't, I couldn't keep up with him. Now, that's why I didn't get a good hook set. Now this rod, speaking of hook sets, this is a big heavy duty seven foot favorite rod. It's a heavy action rod. It's perfect for worm fishing. Let me get another worm. And, but that fish was running so fast, I couldn't catch up to him. What we'll do, <laughs> that was another good one too. There's some big ones in here, son. You know, that's the thing about South Florida. You're, you're, you're on pins and needles. I mean, it, it's, like a, it's like a kid in a candy shop. I mean, there's bass, there's 10, 10 pound bass here. So you don't know what's gonna happen. Okay, I'm ready, I'm ready now. I'm gonna throw, in. remember that bush? The last time I threw to the right a little way, that's over there. That's actually a bush right over there. Okay, I'm gonna ease along. Oh, there's a the They're really nice. You know, this water's about 80 degrees, and they're real active. This temperature, they go crazy. They go crazy. Now this is 50 pound braid, so I can kind of lift them in the boat. Okay. Take these, take these pliers and try to get the hook out. That's the only problem with, with the filming. I was kind of letting it, letting it run just a second because I wanted to let everybody get ready. But in reality, I set the hook pretty quick in the summertime because they're taking that thing in there. They're swallowing it so fast. They're actually eating it real quick. So I'm gonna drop it back in the water. Take that little little worm, bring it back up again, and see what happens. Let's, okay, folks, let's talk a little bit about the rod and reel combination that we're using here today. You know, a lot of people, when they're worm fishing, aren't using heavy enough tackle. Now, that's a real challenge. using today for rods is, is one of my favorites. It's actually a favorite rod, but, it, but, it, but it's a seven foot medium heavy action rod. And I like the, long, the rods also with the long handle. I'll tell you why. You know, back 20 or 30 years ago, I might have been a stronger guy, but I'm, you know, I'm an old, I'm an old boy. You know, I'm not as strong as I used to be. I wish I was 20 again. But anyway, to get the power, to get the power like a lot of the young studs have today, I need this long rod handle right here. I stick it in my stomach right here. I got a big old stomach, and I can stick it right there. And now it's anchored. Now, when I when I go to set the hook, I get an anchor point. Now, I can I can put more pressure with anchored like this and like this than a really strong guy can with just his hands. If he just uses his hands like this, he doesn't have the power that I have 
with the rod right here in my stomach. You can also add like a big Ugg button deal. You can, there's all kind of things to buy or even make one. You can even kind of cushion the rod in your stomach. Okay, again, there's a couple things that I really have to emphasize. Keeping the rod high, being a line watcher, and then when you get the final strike, the whole deal is on a slack line, reel it down, reel it down, keep the rod low, and set the hook. Well, folks, that's my tip of the day, how to be a better worm fisherman. And just follow those four or five real essential things, and you'll catch more and bigger fish. Hey, great having you on the Roland Martin YouTube adventures. I'm going to be doing a lot more YouTubing. It's fun to YouTube. You don't have to catch as many fish. But I did show you a thing or two, so stay, stay tuned on the next adventure. Thank you, sir.